If you're thinking about or already selling final expense insurance, we've got something very special for you guys today. This is a recording of last week's training call where I interviewed Sean McMurray from Florida. Now, in this interview, he shared a lot of information with us, including how he made 14 sales in one day selling final expense insurance. Coming up after this. My name is Douglas Massey, and if you're new to our channel, we suggest hitting the subscribe button below. If you'd like to be notified each time we put out a new final expense training video, click on that little bell looking thing that's right next to the subscribe button. In this interview, you're going to get a lot of information from Sean McMurray. He shared with us his whole process, including everything in his presentation from how he builds rapport using photographs of his loved ones and how he uses a personal commercial about himself. The unique way that he finds the need early on during the presentation and then again the way that he addresses the need before he goes to close the sale. Okay, now before we play this recording, I'm going to make a couple of suggestions on how you can take full advantage of this final expense training video. First off, have a notepad ready. Whether you're already selling final expense insurance or just getting into it, you're going to want to take notes. I suggest watching, listening to it the first time around while you're taking notes, then go back and listen to it again. You're going to be able to use Sean's presentation and the techniques that he uses for yourself. Another way to take full advantage of our final expense training channel is to watch the playlist called Basic Training. You can find the basic training playlist in our playlist after you watch the video. I'm going to ask that you go ahead and click on the like button as that lets us know that you're actually interested in more final expense training content. Go ahead, click on the little thumbs up likey button right now. Enjoy the call. Okay, Sean, I've got you. You are unmuted. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, man, loud and clear. Actually, very clear. That's Perfect. that's great. So, you know, Sean, j just to give you guys, you know, a little information about Sean, he was already selling life insurance product. He was doing mortgage protection and final expense. When he found us, he was referred to us through uh, an old buddy of his, one of our agents, Jimmy in Georgia. Sean, throughout this, I'm going to ask you some questions, maybe about the company you were with, but without without naming any company names or anything like that, you know, real quick, how long have you been licensed and how were you brought into into the life insurance industry? Yeah, I've been licensed for about a year and a half now. My cousin actually brought me into life insurance. I was working at Geico. I was doing auto insurance sales and uh, I was just looking to work for myself, be have my schedule a little bit more flexible, a little more free time. So um, he brought me in originally to life insurance. I was with a company. We won't name it, but I was, I realized I was kind of getting ripped off big time with commission levels and things like that. So yeah, I found, I did that probably for almost a year. And so I found you, um, I got with Jimmy. He kind of made me realize that I was getting ripped off a little bit. So I'm glad I found you. I've been with you since I think March is when I joined you been doing life insurance for about a year and a half and then with you guys I've been I joined you here uh this March. Okay. That sounds about right. Yeah. And so let me ask you something. You know, what do you think, you know, cuz you and I had spoken that you had some struggles. What do you think were the main reasons that you had such a hard time over there? The biggest thing was the commission level, man. Um, I mean, they had good training. I picked, I learned a lot from my cousin. I learned a lot from that company. The the training was good. Commission level, 45, I think 45% commission, final expense, and then 55% commission for uh, mortgage protection. Okay, gotcha. We're, and I, I know you were working direct mail leads. Were you, and I can't remember, were you actually, were you paying for those leads? Yep, paying for them. The way they do it over there is uh, the a, it's just the same. A leads are uh, thirty bucks, thirty bucks a lead. So I was paying the same for the leads. Ten telemarket leads over there were thirty bucks. Whoa! Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was it's a huge difference. So thirty bucks okay. for a telemarket lead, and I'm I'm getting forty five percent commission. I was basically paying to work over there. It right. Like so, some months I was in the negative, and right. I was trying to figure out what I was doing wrong. 
So, so yeah, and your your yeah. your cousin was your upline, so he was pretty happy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he, he was he was getting some fat checks from me, that's for right. sure. <laughs> right. Why did you end up going with final expense over mortgage protection? Final expense, it it seems quicker. I know when we talked about it. My mortgage protection presentation was like an hour and a half, two hours, and then, you know, they wouldn't buy it. Where final expense, you can kind of get them done. Um, you're in and out in pretty much an hour. So I like it better. I know some people like mortgage protection, but for me, it's just, it's a quicker, it's a quicker sale. Okay. Gotcha. Well, and it's, you know, it's, it's different and mortgage protection. When I did it, you know, it's like sometimes I'd get home after 11 o'clock at night to where yeah. final expenses you know, that daytime activity also, that's, that, was, that to me, that was that's, one major difference. That's true. Yeah. Because you know. these people, they're almost, majority of them are retired and at home. So, you know, you can go see them any day. So yeah, that's true too. We rode together, uh, I guess about five weeks ago or so. And up until, up until you rode with me, before you rode with me, what were the, what was the most amount of sales that you ever made in a, in a week? I would say like in an, a week, probably about 10 to 12 sales, maybe around okay. that. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty good. What What do you think was your best day, you know, back then? How many in one day? Uh, in one day, you know, maybe like eight applications, something like that. Okay. I'm not, not too sure. That's my huge. Best All right. And, well, yeah. hey, that's. Okay, so yeah, you know, I'm just uh, and the reason I'm asking you these questions so that you know everybody on the call kind of gets an idea of of who you are and what what your what your abilities are as far as you know selling in the field. So all right, so then we you and I finally met. We rode together, and you seen me not kick ass. You know, you, you <laughs> seen me. Uh, I think I did either four or five sales that day since that ride along. Can you describe your biggest day? My first day out after that ride along, I realized that some things I was doing wrong. So the first day out from that ride along, I had 10 appointments uh, the very next day, and I sold nine out of the 10 uh, for 14 applications, right? I think right under 7,000 premium. So wow. um, you, as you can see, you definitely helped me out a lot riding with you. Cool. Uh, and yeah. I mean, to me, that's, I can't say that's, because of me it's because i know what you did you you know you're already in the field you're doing your thing you're producing so now you ride with another agent and you and you were able to go oh i like that and mm -hmm. and borrow that from me and make it work for you and that's i know yeah. that's what you did it mm -hmm. was obvious right off the bat what do you think was different about that that day where you you, you wrote that 14 applications? What do you think was different about that day, if anything, than any other day that you've had in the field? Was there anything special about that day that you can think of? Yeah, I, the one thing that sticks out to me is I gave myself more opportunity on that day. Before I rode with you, I would book my appointments an hour and a half spread from each other. So I can only book up a full day would be only about eight appointments doing it that way. So after riding with you, I realized I should give myself more opportunity. So if I do them an hour apart, which I do now, um, I'm able to book up 12 appointments would be a full day. So I was able to book 10 appointments out of 12 and then sell nine out of 10. So it was really just more shots on deck and uh, more opportunity. That's the one thing that really stuck out, stands out to me from that day. And I, you know, I got a little bit lucky. I mean, 10 people out of 10 people being home, uh, we know that hardly ever happens. A little bit of luck in there too, I'd say. <laughs> right, right. That's why we yeah. schedule so tight because we expect, you know, that we're going to get stood up a little bit. That's pretty nice. Well, you know, I mean, that's the reality of it. You know, when I, I know when we book up our appointments, we're like, we're, you know, we're going to get stood up by a few of them. Let me ask you this. Were you early or late to any of those appointments? I think I was late to, a, you know, a few of them, but I'm booking them. I'm saying, hey, I'll be there from noon to one. I'm giving them like an hour spread. That's something no. else different I'm doing. Uh, before I would say, hey, I'm going to be there at 10 o'clock. So uh. if I'm 30 minutes late, they're like, oh, this guy, this guy's late. But okay. if I give them that hour spread, hey, I'll be there from 12 to 1, it's like, you know, it's easier to make it on time. So I might have been late to like a couple of them, but not 
not too much because I gave myself that spread there. Okay, so you were probably late to a couple of them, but it didn't make a difference. That's kind of the point I wanted to get to. It's something that I realized years ago was that with our with these prospects, you know, our our low income clientele, half the time it doesn't matter if you're even an hour early or an hour late. And that's mm-hmm. that's kind of why I asked you that. So, you know, and I I know that you do a combination of calling to set up appointments. Meanwhile, you you door knock in between. And recently, since we've met, you you've even messed around with using an appointment setter a little bit. I, I'd I'd like if you wouldn't mind to kind of describe how many days you book out your appointments. In other words, if you're calling today, when are you trying to get the appointments for? And how many times a day are you calling through your leads? Yeah, I, I try to do it one day in advance. You know, sometimes with my schedule, I'll have to do two days in advance. But I notice when you do it, hey, I'll be there tomorrow. They're more likely to be there when you're doing it one day in advance. So I'll dial like two times a week is how I would do it. Now it's different because I am using Diana. So my schedule is a little different. But when I was just doing it myself to make it easy, I would dial Monday for Tuesday and then Wednesday for Thursday. And then Friday would be just like a cleanup day, try to save people that canceled and stuff like that. Cool. Uh, And how many times during the day are you calling through your leads? Oh, yeah. In the morning, I try to get it. I'll start at like 830 and I'll usually book up a full day uh, within a couple hours. I book about four appointments an hour on average. So I'll get usually a full day in a couple hours if I have to which doesn't really happen that often. I'll come back in the afternoon and try them again, but I usually get it all done in the morning. Gotcha. Are, uh, how many leads? I'm trying to get a picture of how many leads you're dialing through each time you, you do these dials. Yeah, I got, I mean, I got hundreds on my, my desk. So, and I'm getting 20 new ones every week. So I start with the fresh ones. And I also try to get my reschedules in from last week, people that weren't there. And I'm door knocking too. So I'll just, those will be easy. I just have to confirm those. Um, cool. But yeah, I mean, I'll call, I'll call, you know, I'll call a lead that's like a year old if I'm, if I need to. Sometimes they'll pick up and sometimes that will be a sale. You never know. But I try to start with the newest ones first. Cool. So you're, you're working, you know, you, you just keep working the lead over and over. You're calling it. If it's got a phone number and, and it rings, you're, you're calling. You're calling. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And if they hang up on me, I'll go and I'll door knock. I'll go door knock them because, you know, sometimes they don't know what you're talking about. But when you have the actual lead in front of them and they see their handwriting and they see the lead, they're like, oh, OK, that's what it was. You know, even if they hang up, I try to door knock them, too. Excellent. All right. So now you brought up door knocking. Everybody does it a little different. I don't uh, you know, I know it's kind of I'm kind of putting you on the spot. Would But would you mind maybe sharing? kind of what you're doing at the door, uh, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'll go up to the door. I have the lead on my clipboard. When they answer, I just make sure I smile and I say their first name like I know them. You know, hey, Bob, this landed on my desk the other day. My office sent me out here to go over this with you. Uh, do you have a couple minutes? We can go over this real quick. You know, a lot of times, well, if it's husband and wife, I want, first of all, I want to make sure husband and wife are home. So a lot of times I'll just reschedule. I'll say, hey, you know, so they'll either say, come on in. Yeah, we got a couple minutes, but most of the time it's an appointment for a later date. I'll just say, hey, I'm going to be out here on Thursday. You know, what works best for you morning, afternoon, or evening? Just going back while I'm talking to them, I'm handing them the lead so they can see what I'm talking about and they can see their handwriting. So they're not asking me, what is, what is this? I'll just hand them the lead. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. I'll just let you read it here. It's what you filled out. Is there yeah. so and I mean, that's the basics. I just, you know, I had a feeling you were going to say that that's pretty much what everybody what we all do at the door. So everyone does yeah. it a little different, says it a little a little different. When you're door knocking lead, do you have any, I don't know, any suggestions that, that you can think of for, for new agents that are on this call that are, you know, maybe getting ready to, to go out and, and do their first door knocks? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I don't think my door knocking has really changed that much from when I first started. I'd say just handing them the lead, smiling, saying their first name like you know them, and, you know, say, hey, you know, you got a couple quick minutes to go over this real quick. Um, you know, it shouldn't take too long. You know, if you can get you can get in the door, that gives you opportunity at another sale there. But the, I'd say the most important thing is always get an appointment from that. If they don't let you in the house, make sure you get them on the books for a couple days later. 
you know, I'll be out here on Thursday. You're going to be home. You guys going to be home around this time? Okay. Okay, great. So if you can't get in the door right then, I'd say that's the most important thing. Just make sure you get them on the book. It's pretty straightforward. I know you, you kind of do the same thing as that. It, it is. It, it, it's kind of I, similar. Mean, yeah. I, I, I don't, I, I'm a little pushier. It's maybe mm -hmm. my personality. And I think that what we all have to do is figure out that part of your personality that works at the door as to where some can be a little pushier, more aggressive than others. Um, I think, you know, and I, try, I, I know I've turned them off before because what I do is I push. I tell them, I tell them I'm not going to be able to come back. So, you know what, instead of it taking 10 minutes, how about we do this real quick? I'll give you the short version. It'll only take a couple minutes. Can we sit down right there? And then I, yeah. I just kind of like, I kind of push and walk towards them. And it's like with the wrong person, when I do that, they get like, whoa, they get, I, I see them getting upset. But with the right people, they're like, yeah, yeah, okay, all right, all right, come on in. And so yeah. that's, that's my, I think that's my pushy style as to where you're more laid back and, you know, hey, uh, you know, I'm not here to harm you. <laughs> as to where I, I think I tend to be more aggressive. Um, well, yeah, um, so, I mean, advice for new guys would be, uh, you know, see what works better for you. Uh, you know, try your way out and try my way out and, you know, see what works for you. That's right. Maybe, maybe the pushy style is you. Maybe the laid back style is, is you. You don't know until you try it. So just see what you, what works best for you. Um, but yeah, that's your way is definitely different from mine. I know you do a completely different presentation than what I do. And I'd like to ask you a little bit about it uh, in the house, you know, maybe mm -hmm. kind of start with, with your warm up. When do you do the warm up? Is there anything specific that you kind of say and do every time while, while doing your warm up with the prospect? Well, I make sure that I just build rapport with them. I try to talk to them for, you know, like it doesn't have to be forever, but like five, 10 minutes about whatever, just so they like me. And I think that's important for new guys. Um, it's just take your time with them and build rapport. But yeah, with my warm up, I'll take the, the lead, I'll put it in front of them, and I'll ask them who filled it out. You know, was this you, Bob, that filled this out? Or was this you, Mary? And then, oh, yeah, that's, that's my handwriting. Uh, okay, Bob, so you just didn't want to leave a financial burden on Mary. Is that kind of why you filled it out? And kind of get them saying yeah, uh, get them saying yes. And um, I think it's important. I'll do that every time. And I think it's important to edify him, make him look awesome. Uh, wow, you got a great husband here. Uh, he's thinking about you not only while he's alive, but he's thinking about you when he's gone. Not many guys think that way. So that's something that I'll do every time. That, I guess that's if that's what you're talking about, warm up. That's before I do anything else. That would be the first conversation that I have with them after yeah, we build rapport. That's pretty good. Bit. I like that. So you, you, the word you use, edify him. And I like the way that you that you talk about, you know, doing it, you you just you get right to it. So I'm assuming like you kind of find whatever it is, if you see some, you know, the old if you see something to talk about in the environment, you start talking about it kind of that way to, to kind of kind of get the get them warmed up to your personality. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, if there's pictures of grandkids, like, you know, oh, are these, you know, these are your grandkids here? And you know, they'll start talking your ear off about them and, you know, just you know, be polite to them. I try to treat them like I treat my grandparents. I mean, they're probably like my grandparents' age. So, you know, I try to just treat them like family and just be polite to them and, and just be interested and find something in their house that when building rapport, find something that I like, you know, nice. that could be, it could be, it could be anything. So, nice. yeah, I think that, that, that helped me out a lot being a new guy. They're gonna, I think they got to like you. Yeah, I think that can be the hardest part for a newer agent doing that warm up. It, it was for me when I first got licensed years ago. I remember the presentation that I was doing at the time was you know, kind of like what you described, you know, an hour and a half presentation. You know, it's like it, it kind of led them into getting to know me. And, it, you know, interesting enough, even the presentation I teach nowadays does that, too. You know, so I've I've. I've never been really good with it. I, I think it's it's come more natural as time goes by and you do it, you know, more and more presentations every day, every day presentations. It's like it gets easier. It comes more natural. You, when you were with me, you saw how I like to try to get them to laugh. I joke around and, and stay, just say stupid stuff and, you know, goofy just to kind of like get them <laughs> to get them in that. And, and what you said 
um, when doing the warm up, getting them something you I can't remember exactly what you said, but you get them to to agree with you. Get it? You get them in that yes mode. That mm-hmm. I love. And to me, it's very, very, very important. Do you mind sharing a a little bit of of your presentation? You know, the fir- maybe the first part of your of your presentation. Yeah, absolutely. So right after that, right after I edify him, you know, find out the reason, oh, that's why I'm here is because you want to, you know, protect Mary if something happens to you. Um, And before I really get into business, I just, I have my little flip book that I use and I just tell them a little bit about myself. So I have pictures of me and my girlfriend, pictures with me and my family. And um, the most important thing on this page is the story I tell about my grandfather, who I was really close with, who I I lost, and I kind of share that story with them, why I'm passionate about this, why I believe in final expense coverage. And if you want, I could tell you that story. You know, if you don't mind, would, would you mind sharing that with us? Yeah, yeah, no problem. So I'll kind of, Doug, um, kind of the reason why I got into this business, why I'm passionate about what I do. Unfortunately, I lost my, my grandfather, who I was super close with growing up. He, unfortunately, he passed away in a bicycle accident. And he was just riding his bike down the hill one day. Um, doctors were adjusting his blood pressure medication up and down. So I think he was a little bit loopy that day. Uh, and when he got to the bottom of the hill, he just lost control. Uh, flipped over the curb and he snapped two vertebrae in his neck. So just like that, he went into a vegetative state. Doctors gave him 72 hours to live. And uh, we just got to say our last goodbyes to him. So it was tough on my family. I I, I didn't grow up uh, with a wealthy family at all. So I, I thank God every day. He had coverage on himself. We were able to pay off his funeral, able to pay off some debt he left behind. And also my grandma was able to pay off the mortgage and just downsize to something smaller. And then I'll transition from my story about myself to them. So Mary, Bob, have you guys ever lost anyone close to yourself like that? And me sharing my story, I know they're more inclined to tell me their story because everybody's lost somebody. So um, it could be what, you know, yeah, I lost my brother, you know, a couple years ago to cancer. Um, and I'm, I'll just, you know, I'm sorry to hear about that, Bob. Did, did he have coverage on himself? You know, and it's either a good story or a bad story. Yeah, yeah, he had coverage on himself. Thank God, because, you know, his funeral was like $12,000. Um, and you'll hear the, as we know, you, you can hear the other end too. No, we had, they didn't have any coverage. So we had to scrap together what we had. Um, it was really tough on all the brothers and sisters to come together and, and pay for that. And then either way I say, okay, makes sense. Kind of why I'm here, Bob, you just didn't want that to happen uh, to Mary. If something happened to you, you don't want have, have her to financially struggle like you did with your brother. Okay. It makes sense why I'm here. And then after that, I'll jump to the next part where I tell them about the companies that I'm with. Do you have questions okay. about that? Doug, go ahead. All right. I can just keep yeah, going. Yeah. Up to you. Go through as much of your presentation as you're willing to share, man. That'd be awesome. Yeah, no problem. So the next part, I'm going. That's when I flip the page and I got all the companies there, pictures of them, Mutual of Omaha, Transamerica. So um, yeah, Bob. So the the way this works is I work through the state of Florida. So I work with over 20 different companies. You've probably seen commercials on TV that seem too good to be true, um, and they usually laugh. Yeah, yeah. So you know, you see them. Ten dollars gets you million dollars worth of coverage. You know, it seems too good to be true. We know it usually is. So I kind of just cut to the chase and I tailor you to find the right company for you because everybody's different. So I'm going to look through all of my companies. I'm going to find you the best one out there for you. They're all A-rated companies, as you see here. <clears throat> and I point, you guys know Mutual of Omaha. Yeah, yeah, we get mail from them all the time. Yeah, they're all companies that have been around forever. They're not going anywhere. Um, and then next, I'll flip the page again. Now, Bob, Mary, I'm just going to go ahead and get your stats, kind of like how a doctor would. Um, we just got to be as accurate as possible. If we miss anything, as we know, the insurance companies, they usually find out anyway. So the more you tell me, the more I'm on your team and I can help you out. So that's kind of where I make it seem like it's like us versus them. I'm on their team helping them out. Right there, I'll do like a soft close. Sometimes, so Bob, were you looking to just get coverage on yourself, or are you looking also to get coverage on Mary too? And in that kind of a soft close, I feel like it's will say, "Oh yeah, just me," or "Yeah, we want it on both of us." 
So, okay, great. So that's, I do exactly what you do, Doug, name, age, medication, uh, all that good stuff there. Right before I work up the prices, right when I get towards the bottom, before I start getting to the prices, something that I've learned at my previous company that seems to work pretty well is I'll say, um, and Mary, Bob, I know this might seem kind of obvious, but what's the, some of the companies will ask me, what's the insurable interest? What's the reason we're getting this coverage? And to me, it seems like, and I'll edify him again, Bob, you're just being a good husband and you just want to make sure she's taken care of if something happens to you and vice versa. Is that right, Mary? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Well, let's see what I can do to go ahead and help you guys out. So at that point, that's when I start running the numbers, working up the quotes and I'll flip them that I am your policy. So I'll let them read that over. And uh, I'm just trying to get the quotes together as fast as possible while they're reading that. How, how, many, it... how many options or how many death benefit options are you showing them? I used to do three. After I rode with you, I, now I do four to five, and that seems to work better, giving them more options. And also what I learned from you, Doug, which I stole, is the lowest amount I'll show is, is 50 bucks. So I won't show any lower. Before, when I was new, I didn't really know what I was, I would show like $19 and, you know, oh. 20 bucks. And of course, they'll pick that a lot right. of times. So, right. yeah. Right. 50, they, 50, they, a lot of yeah, them, they naturally 19. go right to the bottom number. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's it's so funny. Real quick, I, this guy met uh, a guy uh, I sold up actually by your area a while ago. The guy was like, he fought to get the lowest, kept bothering me, the lowest, the lowest, the lowest. And he didn't have a voided check, you know. So when I when I sold him like the the nineteen dollars something, he gives me his check and account, and he's got like seventy thousand dollars in there. And I'm sitting there going, "You cheap bastard!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they yeah. That. yeah. Go to that yeah. bottom number. Some of them, it's it's this natural yeah. natural thing. Um, yeah. So how how do you word it how, when you're showing them the five options or the four options? What are you saying to them? Yeah. So work up the options, show them the prices, and then um, the close would be out of these options, Mary and Bob. Which one would you guys be the most comfortable with monthly to see if we can get you approved? And then I just shut up. Uh, I don't talk, and I just I let them have the first word there. That's kind gotcha. of a, you know, that's kind of whoever speaks first loses. So right, I let them cho right. choose at that point. And then once they pick an option, I just say, yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking too. And then I just pull out the application and start asking questions. So what state were you born in, Mary? What's, okay. What state were you born in, Bob? And I just go right through the application. So that, that's pretty good. That's a lot of information, man. And yeah, there's a couple of things there that I'm going to borrow from you, if you don't mind. Uh, and I'm that's sure not, hey, other, I stole. I like that. That's I stole that's, a lot of your stuff, so it's only fair. Hey, man, I, I love it. I love it. I'm gonna ask you a potentially loaded question because I definitely don't know the answer to it, but I'm gonna ask you anyways. I know that you know you've been working direct mail since since you've been with us, and you finally went and got some of those telemarket leads recently yeah. can you tell me you know and just just be honest tell me how many did you buy uh did you make presentations did you make sales yeah man i um well i'm still selling them with my direct market ones in the mix but um i think i yeah i bought 30 telemarket ones and i'm letting diana call them so she's booking my appointments i think i sold i mean they're obviously not as good as direct direct mail um but i think i sold a few i know i sold a few of them Definitely made some money off of them, but uh, direct mail is definitely better. But you know, the direct mail is thirty dollars a pop. Where the tell okay, so that's really but that's interesting. Cheaper. So yeah. you you gave those to to Diana. You you don't want to trust her with your direct mail leads. Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I uh, you know I wanted to try it out and see how she did. So okay, uh, I'll have her I have her try it out on the telemarket ones. But I am I also did give her a bunch of direct mail ones too. Okay. Um, that I wasn't able to contact. So I, I kind of, you know, I wanted to see how she did. It was kind of like a test run, but um, she's, I mean, she's doing, she's doing well with them. So. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. I know you've never used an appointment center. It's like you're handing, 
you know, this is, I always tell agents anytime, you know, when it's time to step up and use an appointment <laughs> setter, it's kind of a scary feeling because you know, and I'm always upfront about this, you know, that there's no way an appointment setter is going to treat your leads the same way that you treat them, I mean, you know, because you're the one that's spending all that money on them and all they're doing is, is calling them. Oh, so Yeah, no way. No way. It's way different when I'm calling. Yeah, cause right. I'm, I mean, I, I'm pushy. I'm, you know, I'm coming. You tell me no. Well, I got to You're on my list here, uh, Bob. So I got to get you off my list. So I'm gonna swing by around five tomorrow. So it's, and you know, you'll sell those being pushy. But I know, I'm sure an appointment setter would be like, oh, okay. Well, that guy didn't want it. Scratch him off. That's the plus of doing it yourself. What I've realized is having an appointment setter though is she can be booking me appointments while I'm running appointments, which is cool. That's that's, that's definitely not gonna, a pro. That's not going to hurt you to get more sales. Um, I, I mean, that's you know, like like we had originally spoken months ago. You know, at some point, I I think that everyone that's that once you start getting really good at this business, you've got to graduate. And one of the one of the levels of graduation is, you know, especially if your your commission levels are high enough to pay for it, is to to have someone work with you. You know, now it's like the two of you are working as a team, you know, they're doing their part, you're doing your part, and it should equal more sales. I mean, that really is the bottom line. Sean, man, I really, really want to thank you for, for, for sharing all of this with us. I really, really, really appreciate this interview. You've been great. Um, and I'm sure that everybody on this call was able to pick something up that's helpful. You know, I, I think, you know, like when we talked about when you rode with me, when you ride with another agent or you're listening to what they're doing that's different, it's easy to pick up something that they're doing that you like. And so mm -hmm. hopefully everybody on this call was able to, to do that. You know, again, Sean, uh, thank you very, very much for this. Everybody, happy hunting. Guys, if you're interested in some of the highest commission levels in the entire industry, along with access to our direct mail leads program and our advanced final expense sales training, email me at doug at ufesonline.com. Happy hunting.